Cause when the next decision read, we ain't playing no games with you either home boy, no new no. situation like a new injury, so I'm watching from the sidelines. Just spectate the foundation, yeah, I rep the nation. Please excuse my greatness, super melanated universal creation. My statements is heavy. I hope that you're ready. Shut up, shut up, shoot and steady from the death. What up, child? The power just flows. Trying to be a poet like brother, but they wouldn't let me. So I'm stuck to cut my fist still high. High people on my mind, my fingers low. Trying to oppress me, who needs support? Your soldiers, we more than unique recruits. My people, the ones that I'm speaking to. If we don't make a change, then who do we leave it to? Cause if you say Jesus, you better off calling on Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. I'm afraid that the death ain't no leisure suit. This feeling is so unbelievable. The counterbalance to the bullshit they feeding you. Shout out to the general for the BPC. Yes, sir, we salute. My man, no heavy. I just Absolutely does, but 
you know, like, ain't no, ain't no switch for that shit. You know what I mean? So, yeah, keep it moving. You know, you live and you learn. Keep pushing. That's all, that, that's all you can do. Yeah, it is. That's all you can do, you know. And the things that you can't at least not, you, you can never go back and fix some shit, but the things that you can't go back and try to salvage, so to speak, you should, you know, if given the opportunity. Definitely. Definitely, man. Life, I mean, life is beautiful, though, man. When you, you know, you move past this phase and you'll, you'll sit back and look back on where you was and laugh at it. You know what I mean? Uh, I don't know, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I do not know, man. Some shit you look back and you just you just shake your head like, wow. It's, no, it was not that's funny that's then, and it ain't funny now. That should make you mad again. Exactly. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Keep it a stack. Hey, um, oh, and for those of you that just tuned in, um. We typically don't really talk about much for the first 15 minutes or so, you know, whatever comes to mind, current events. So if you see it on the live stream, and do us a favor, man, uh, share that Intellectually Petty uh, YouTube. They kind of shut down us going live on our My Skin Is My Sin one, so we came up with a new one. Um, So hook us up. If you see a post, share a post. If you want to call in, the number is 347-855-8692. You got to press 1 to get on air. Yeah, but uh, I don't know, man. It's just you get to a point where you like, is this gonna be it? Like, is this is this the rest of life for me? Like, you get into right. them ruts. Yeah, it's like a midlife. and that shit is discouraging as hell. Yeah, it's midlife crisis shit, bro. Like, y'all trust me, I understand that. Right? Uh, I totally understand. I'm in a whole new phase of life that I never saw me in. You know what I'm saying? Five years ago, I never saw me in being in the position I have in life right now as far as how my life is operating. You know, but you got to roll with the punches, man. You know what I mean? You got to go defense. You got to go yeah. defense, counter punch. You know what I'm saying? It's just, it's just, about, it's just about taking control of your shit, man, and, um, and running with it. It said the point here. you know, you know, ain't no alternative. Damn, I'm trying to, uh, you know I'm not good with the uh, multitasking, so I'm, tr- I'm trying to share the little live stream, get us somebody up in there. But yeah, I do think it'll be a nice man, little right? build tonight. Yeah, I, I absolutely believe so. This is going to be dope, man. Ain't no problem. really good. We got like five minutes though. LeBron on the Lakers. They go into the playoffs. Fact. You think so? Fact. I know so. It's LeBron James. It's LeBron James. Like LeBron James is alone himself is fifteen games. You know what I'm saying? The Lakers. The Lakers was in what like ninth place. They all. They just missed the playoffs last year without them. Of course they're gonna make the playoffs with him. Mm. It could be interesting. It really could be interesting. I'm I'm really interested to see how Lonzo's going to react. Man, ain't nobody worried about the Lonzo ball, bro. Like, just let him, you know, make his little whack videos. He can't rap. You know what I'm saying? But he got money. But, he's, just, but, he, but, he, but he's actually a good player, too, though, bro. He's decent. He's decent. He's, de- he's talented. You know what I mean? But... I, I don't want to say because I don't I don't know the brother I don't I don't I don't like his father makes everything bad for him that's that's my opinion his father makes everything bad for him but I mean as far as him as a player he's talented he's got potential he's good you know but he ain't all that either you know it's a it's a it's a whole bunch of other players in the league better than him too you know that ain't getting none of that type of publicity for none of that negative BS you know the garbage his father be stealing out man you know what I mean. I mean, yeah, but I mean, with. but you, that, that's got absolutely nothing to do with him when, when he step on the court, though. And I'm talking about strictly in between the lines. In between the lines, dude is a nice player. He's good. He just ain't got he, no he, shot. He, 
you decent. So, I mean, you, just, you can't shoot the ball. like It's not like he could be a cornerback. You know what I'm saying? If you can't catch, you can be a cornerback in, in the NFL. In the NBA, if you can't shoot, kind of useless. You know what I'm saying? You're limited. I mean, like, Allen Iverson was never the best shot. Jason Kidd ain't had no shot. Yeah, but see, you Hall of Famer. So no, nobody could stand in front, could stay in front of Allen Iverson. Jason Kidd, Jason Kidd was a floor general. Like, he saw three, four plays in advance. You know what I'm saying? So that's how he got off. He was an ultimate ball handler. So, I, I think I your man is kind of like that, though. He is a floor general. And and it, and, it, and, it, and they say people love playing with him. Like that's that that's like the crucial element right there. If if the other players say they that. they like playing with you, like that's some shit. Especially when you get to that level. Yeah, I believe that. I mean, he's like a he's like a great value, Jason Kidd. You know, cool. Right, and that's now. What is it? He going into a second year. Yeah. You yeah. know, so I mean, he got so he got, like, he got potential. He and that's the thing, like when you bring in somebody like LeBron, that's either going to really step your game up as a player or it's going to really just ruin your confidence. Yeah. At least in my opinion. Yeah, that's right. I agree with that. I mean, it's going to make or break you. But, I mean, you got Rondo. You got a whole bunch of strong, head-minded dudes with a lot of championship experience on that team outside of LeBron. So, you know, Rondo don't need to be worried about Rondo. You know what I'm saying? Cause Rondo and that, that, I mean, speaking of somebody with no shot, like Rondo ain't really got no shot. But yeah, when he want to yeah, ball, he Rondo, can ball. Yeah, yeah, Rondo, Rondo got a chip under his belt, and they wouldn't have got that chip without him. You know what I'm saying? Like, he was an integral part in that championship. Like, he, he defends. He's got a set jumper now. He's got a set jumper. You know, he can make an open jumper. Um, gets bored. Gets down. You know what I'm saying? He's going to give you, like, 12 points a game. I mean, you can't. Hey, he's just, he, that, that, that basically is uh, old boy numbers. Yeah, and he's about, he about to go way down. younger. And he bigger. He, he, he's going to Toronto, bro. That's the reality of it. He's going to be in Toronto. You think so? Year. Oh, that would be horrible. Don't do that to that young uh, he's, man. He, he's trade, I mean, he's, he's trade bait. He's trade bait for Kawhi. I mean, thus far, you know, the whole LeBron playing GM shit is he's not really good at it. That's not him, bro. That's, look, LeBron doesn't run the Lakers. Magic Johnson runs the Lakers. LeBron came, signed up because they promised him something. You know what I'm saying? We're going to bring get some other players around you. They're trying to win chips, bro. Like, they're not playing. Like, Ball is probably going to be out of L.A. midseason. Nah, man, I doubt it. They're going to keep him. I think they're gonna let him let them run this year and see how they do before the you know because they got a couple big free agents at, you know like Kawhi they want to get Kawhi you know right. uh, so I think they'll let them play it out this year and especially you know you got two studs coming from Duke you know so the draft might actually be something next year so they don't really care like if they tank and miss the playoffs they might actually get two really good players out the deal hey nobody nobody's saying it with LeBron bro they ain't happening. Not yeah. yeah, not at this stage of the game. Definitely not. Yeah, and he's just Nobody too good. He like, won't allow it. Yeah. Do you understand what niggas would say about LeBron? The Lakers they make the playoffs. Actually, this you is, know what? Is, I think he got a one year pass on how they do. No, listen, bro. If you you talking about if I'm on your team, we go to the finals. That's his track record. You know what I'm saying? Without me on your team, you don't make the playoffs. That's his history. That's from Cleveland and Miami. You know what I'm saying? I mean, so, I'm I'm not denying that. I'm not disputing that. I'm just saying I think he got like a one year, a free pass for one year because it, it's well documented that they're not a good team. They was not they was not a good team at all. You know, he then won a championship with Cleveland, won won a couple from Miami. He good reputation solidified. So he trying to do one in L.A., and everybody has agreed that this ain't going to be the year. So he kind of, like, going to get a pass on whether they do good or not. If they don't make the playoffs, he's not getting the pass. Yeah, well, That's not happening. I mean, what well, the LeBron haters is going to hate regardless of what he do. They really ain't going to let it go if he don't make the playoffs. 
That ain't happening, bro. I promise. I mean, but when when do they really let anything go? Like the people that really hate LeBron really hate LeBron. Yeah, there's only so I'm much sure. you can say. You know what I'm saying? There's only so much you can say. You, know, you would like, think, but it doesn't stop people. And like I say, when people hate LeBron, they really hate LeBron. Like they met LeBron and he offended them personally. Right. Like he took their girl or something. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so. Hey, <laughs> and um, right on cue, man. We got we got the brother Frederick Hawthorne in in the queue. And I, I, first off, I just want to say this is an honor and a privilege. Um, if you have not checked out Barbershop Conversation, you are missing something in life. Please make sure you do that. Subscribe to the channel on YouTube. And without further ado, let's get the brother, uh, Frederick Hawthorne, in on the conversation. I was like, I was, I was like how, how do I uh, figure out if they know I'm on? <laughs> and you like, oh, without <laughs> right on cue. <laughs> What's up, man? <laughs> yes, <sir. laughs> Good, bro. How you doing, bro? Oh, super, man. Life's great, man. I, thank you for having me, man. I, I genuinely appreciate it. Thank you for working with me, too, with my schedule with my kids. You know what I'm saying? So we had to wait a week or two, but we got we in here. I appreciate you, man. Hey, man. We love the kids, bro. <laughs> Damn, bro. I was um I'm trying to think where do we start, man? Like uh I know Ron was telling me about your story and everything, man, and and mm-hmm. you homeless? Oh, for sure. For two years, man. Man, I was I was man, I was I was college educated, I had a college degree in history. I, I wanted to go to law school. That didn't work out. I was a school teacher and homeless for two years, sleeping in my car, sleeping on my girl's bed, sleeping on my best friend's futon. Like, and, and, and you know the irony about it? I didn't know I was homeless till last summer. <laughs> because, because, you, because, because it was so organic to me. You know what I mean? Hey, I'll just go to my girl's house tonight. I'll just go to my my best friend's house, I'll sleep in my car. You know what I mean? It, 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 it was just, that was the norm. You know, like, I honestly didn't, like, this may seem odd or may seem uncool, or, but I had no idea that the amount of adversity I was going through my whole entire life. I, hadn't, I, I, I thought being a, having only a mom at home was normal. I thought being a latchkey kid was, was normal. You know, I... You know, I thought working three jobs as a 16-year-old was normal. I, I, I never thought that it was hard until people would tell me, like, God damn, you know, but, <laughs> but yeah, man. yeah, pretty crazy, right? But, yeah, for sure, man, you know, and, uh, uh, you know, born in New York, you know, drugs and alcohol, prostitution, all that stuff was rampant in my family, and uh, it just – uh and and that may be the reason why I've never drank, never smoked, never took prescription pills or anything like that. But uh, uh, Not that's kind of where, like, no, I, I, I won't, no. Even in college when I competed, even in college when I competed, you understand? And uh, um, I, I said, nah, I'm not going to do it. I really endured the pain when I, when we, especially when I get headaches and stuff like that and, and, and you know I put my girl through med school, so she's a full fledged doctor. And I and, and we debate. I'm a Dr. CB guy, and she fills prescriptions. Okay. So how you know understand what I'm saying? So it's a whole <laughs> that's a whole another conversation. But but yeah, man, it's uh that's it, man. That's my life, man. I'm, I'm and I, I do want to highlight one thing you said when you said I put my girl through med school. That's the dopest thing right there, bro. Oh, I appreciate you, King. Yeah, man. That was the only option. What the fuck is the other option? Yeah, <laughs> what was the other option? Like, it's, uh, and, like, I never knew, I never knew that I had this mindset. I really mm-hmm. never, ever knew that it was the mindset that carried me until I was able to get to a point, sit down, and look at my life from 50,000 feet. When I'm going mm-hmm. through it, oh, I thought it was normal. I thought it was normal to have, uh, Six thousand dollars in bills a month and, and and laid off at twenty seven. I'm like, oh shit! I got to get a job. Like, I got to pay for a med school. I got to pay for my car. I got to pay my rent. I got to pay for 
student loans. You know, I got to pay for gas, and I thought it was normal. I thought I just had to get out and hustle. And, and I'm being real G with you. I'm not making this shit up to make this story, make it into a Hollywood movie and no shit like that. Can I curse? I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Uh, but uh, it, it, it's just the mindset is so powerful. Like, and, 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 and people think, like, that people are shocked when I, when I tell them it's that easy. It's really the mindset. Like, if you lose Monday, mm-hmm. it was it, – it's a two day race. If you lose Monday and Tuesday, it's a three day race. If you lose Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, it's a four day race. You understand where I'm coming from? So it's the mindset that, that, that carried me all these years. You understand what I'm saying? And, and you look up, you're like, wow, she's through med school. I got two beautiful kids, you know? And it's like, Oh shit, things are, things are a little bit easier now, you know, but going through it, I I just thought it was normal. You know, and and now here I am. You know, old ass forty year old man. You know. <laughs> oh man, hey, don't talk, man, because I'm right there with you, bro. That's so beautiful, man. Hey. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that is such a beautiful thing, man. Let me ask you this though: Why boxing? Yeah. What was it about boxing? You know, m- my first love is basketball. I thought I was gonna be the next Isaiah Thomas, but I only grew to five seven. You know what I mean? I got a basketball scholarship, but. That did it real quick. But I remember watching boxing with my family. But boxing was a staple. And, and it may be for many other black families, too. But, you know, Saturday night, HBO. I was, I was uh, so I can time stamp it, I was Emmanuel Stewart. I was an Emmanuel Stewart guy. Like, Emmanuel Stewart got me into the HBO simulcast. And then he handed off to George Foreman, right? And then, but it, it, it was it, the competitive nature. My first fight I can remember vividly Mm -hmm. was Meldrick Taylor, Julio Cesar Chavez. I remember, I I remember, I I remember that fight moment to moment to moment, man. And it's like, and I was like, how the fuck, excuse me, how did Richard Steele give this guy the fight? I never really understood it. And, and since then, I've always had an, I've always had an infatuation with boxing. Then years later, Years later, I, uh, my editor, Ken Miller, who I owe so much to, I owe so much to, I'll say it again, I owe so much to, says, hey, Fred, come, you want to work boxing with me? And this is 10 years ago. You know, you want to work for me? You know, because you can't be everywhere at one time. You know, and I'll say, yeah, I'll be a rug boy. I'll work for you. I'll, I'll type your articles up. I'll, I'll I, back then I was typing articles and stuff, and he got credit for it, all that stuff. You know, I was like his underwriter, per se, you know, right. and uh um, uh, and, and five years later, then my name started going in the articles and, you know, I mean, stuff like that. And, and now he's branched out and now he runs the call and post in Cleveland, Ohio, Don King's newspaper. And, uh, th- that's how I got into boxing. And, but I use boxing to get on the other side of the velvet rope, mm-hmm. you know, like, like, I use that. Sam Watson is a great friend of mine who I owe so much to, owe so much to, owe so much. Like Sam Watson and Ken Miller are like my godsends in terms of boxing, in terms of my boxing success, you know. And uh, uh, because of Ken Miller handing me off to Sam Watson, I have a relationship with Floyd Mayweather. Did a movie with Sam Watson and Floyd Mayweather. Uh, I've made side deals with Sam Watson, made lucrative money deals. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, you just showing no, no, I'm not showing off, but, but, but I said that <laughs> I, I said, oh no, but, but, but real. And, 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 I, and I'm, and I'm glad you stopped me right there because it, uh, it tells you how three kids from the inner city, different age demographic, Sam Watson is the greatest hustler in mankind, right? Mm. Ken Miller is one of the greatest media members of mankind. And guess what? South Central, born and raised, Sam Watson. Ken Miller, South Central, born and raised. Me, Harlem, USA, born, South Central, raised. You understand what I'm saying? So these three kings, including myself, were humble enough to nourish each other and not say, well, I already made it. Ken Miller already made it. Sam Watson already made it. Right. It it was a blessing for them to say, hey, hey, let me get this little dude, Fred, and I let him – uh, let me get him a slice of pie, but more importantly, uh, let me get him the ingredients to the pie and let him learn how to make his own pie. And and, 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 that, and that's where 
our relationship is gone. You understand what I'm saying? Like, there's so many silent, silent things that go on in boxing that can never ever be said publicly and stuff like that. But I, I owe a great deal of my my success to Ken Miller and Sam Watson. Like, Krim de la Krim. Love them guys, for real. That's, that's awesome, man. I've never heard anybody say anything bad about Sam Watson a day in life. Everybody I've ever seen an interview says the exact uh-huh. same thing about Sam Watson. If they do, they're lying. If they right. do, they hate themselves. Right. That's dope. You know what I mean? Uh huh. Because Sam Watson is a he's a man. Last Saturday, hey, I'm gonna keep it real 100 with you. Last Saturday, I went to a uh, uh, softball game. He had the LAPD out there. He had a uh-huh. whole bunch of um, Instagram influencers out there. He had. He had Team Watson out there, and they had a softball game, right? In addition to the softball game, they were giving away hundreds of backpacks on the other end, right? And uh, they were giving – they had performances from 93.5. 93.5 is probably the the third largest – maybe second. Second or third largest radio show out here. Out here. here in LA, and, okay. and they had their street team, there, right? And, and I had already committed to – 51 backpack in my giveaway, right? And I said, Sam done gave away over 100 backpacks. I said, you know what I'm going to do? I want to give away over 100 backpacks. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like that's not from a competitive standpoint, but just inspiring. Like, do it. You understand what I'm saying? I'm not competing that's with that. I, I can never right. – I can't compete with the man on, on any level. No way can I compete with him. But just – I like this man is in the community, 64 years old, Spending his Sunday inspiring and co-joining the community, and he's giving away hundreds of backpacks. I, I just thought it was amazing, and I was like, I can do more, I can be better, you know what I mean? And and that germinated the 102 backpacks were given away this Sunday. So, but Sam Watson is just a phenomenal guy. I know this supposed to be about me, but God, it, if you talk about Sam Watson, if I can talk about Sam Watson forever. You know what I mean? I met the Jacksons because of Sam Watson. You understand? Like, that's for real, for real. Like, the Jacksons come up to his house and watch basketball and football. You get what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's, right. it's insane. Like, it's, you met Tito, it's insane. Too? I never met Michael, though. Uh, say it again. You met Tito? I met Tito. all of them. I met all of them. Tito I, I met all Jermaine, Joe. I never met the mom. I never met the mom. Uh, I met all the men. I haven't met the women. I haven't met Janet. I haven't met Ribby. I haven't met... You know what I mean? But I met all the men. So because of Sam Watson, you know? And uh oh, no. it didn't yeah, I mean <laughs> Yes. Sorry I'm talking more about Sam than me, but yeah. <laughs> hey man, hey, it's your life, bro. And I'm yeah, not great dude, you man. You don't you don't hear that often enough. Uh huh. Great dude, man. Great dude, for sure. I love him dearly. I always I always tell always tell people there's no church. I'm not being morbid, but I'm being real G with you. And remember, when you die old, he's going to live a long time because he's a good person. When you die old, there's never anyone at your funeral because the people die before you, right? Mm -hmm. I tell people, when Sam dies, there will not be a church in the city of Los Angeles that will be able to hold his funeral. Impossible. Mm -hmm. Impossible. The whole city is coming out. I'm I'm being real. I'm, I'm, I'm being real. It's going to take like 10, 10 motorcycles, 10 motorcycles to get him to his, to, to get him to his burial site. Like it's going to stop the whole traffic. Like it's going to be like a, like a presidential motorcade for real. I mean it. I, I, I've seen him touch so many. Yes. That can be an interesting question. What are, what are, what are they going to say when you're gone? What is your legacy going to be? Oh man. You know what? I swear to you. I think about it all the time. And, 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 and you know what comes to my mind? I want mm-hmm. someone to just randomly walk up to my son and give him a Gatorade, give him $10, give him a thank you card years after I'm gone, 20 years after I'm dead. I want somebody's son to walk up to my son and be like, man, my, my father told me that your father was a great man. I swear to God, mm-hmm. I, I, I think about it all the time. And, and uh, that's like, my legacy. My legacy isn't. I remember when I was younger, I, I wanted doctorates, I wanted streets named after me, but I realized the people in the street are more important than the name on the street. You understand what I'm saying? So, right. so I want to delve delve into these communities, and uh, like really, really, like like really, really be entrenched 
in this community and, and hopefully touch these brown and black kids, man, male or female, like really, really delve into this community, man. You know what I mean? Like I can't, I, I can't take it with me. I believe my children will be set to a certain degree. You, you understand? And God has, has rewarded me handsomely. And so now it's time to really, really be hands-on, be tactile. You know, because I can always give $100, $500 and, and turn my back and walk away. And it looks good. Oh, he just donated $500 to the YMCA. But when I'll you, take but that, when though, you, just for the record. I'm sorry to you <laughs> real talk, right? Real talk, real talk. Give me a tax ID yeah, number. Walk away, and, but, uh, when, walk away. <laughs> and uh, but when you, uh, but when you give and and, it, and your time, man, it's powerful, man. It's powerful. It's powerful, man. Like, and, and I thrive off of that. I I, I literally thrive off of that. And I can't wait to the day when my kids are 18 and I really can spend 24, seven days a week in the community for real. Like I, I genuinely mean it when I'm 60, that's going to be my job. I'm, I'm going to really be, if I'm still living in, in LA, I'm be a South central. If I'm going to retire in a, in a, in a, in a tax free state, maybe I'll go to Texas. Maybe I'll go to Florida because I can live better there, you know, and get more bang for my buck. You understand? So I don't know, but, uh, th- th- that's what I want for my legacy, like for real. That's dope. That's very dope. Hey man, we got to get out there and do the conscious Olympics too one day, out in Cali. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And basically, we we came up with it's like it's like Jeopardy for Black folks. Just a game we came up with uh-huh. that we uh okay. we've done it live a couple of times, and the last time we got Doggy Diamonds to host. So if we ever do it uh-huh. live, live again, we're gonna get that brother to continue to host. It was pretty dope, and we okay. just asked questions about us. We gave away okay. a couple of dollars. Pretty dope. Okay. Huh? Okay. Yeah, one of these days we have to hook that up so we can come out there. Okay, for sure. Yeah. yeah. That'd be dope. Uh-huh. That would be dope. That would be dope. That would be dope. And my bad, man, but I had to get my bag on wrong. My bad. You know how I mean. <laughs> 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 Hey, I was keeping a stack with you, though. Uh, for real. <laughs> hey, I appreciate you. Hey, but I appreciate you listening to me on YouTube because I know I'm kind of abrasive and and – and let me tell you this. I, my editor told me a long time ago, if you want to be great, you got to be black. If you want to be great, you can't be black. Sometimes you can't be black. 75% of the time, you got to be black all the time. And when you're black all the time, people are going to call you. People are going to call you pro-black. People are going to call you, uh, 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 you, you you're too brave for your own good. You, you're, you're too aggressive. You're egotistical. You're selfish. And, and, and I'm not saying those are the characteristics of blacks, but that's how they perceive black people. Right. And I never, and I never ever forgot, and I never forgot that in order for me to be great, I gotta be black. And and, and I refuse to be anything else on my YouTube channel. So I just want to say thank you for for listening to me, because sometimes I can rub people the wrong way, and I know every video ain't for everyone. And um, but I just want to say thank you for uh, for uh, for listening, man, for real. You know what it is. I like uh, the diversity though, because you'll break down mm-hmm. a boxing match and then give stock tips. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was three and zero last year too with y'all. I All right, I seen that shit. I was watching. I'm like, oh damn! I wish I had seen uh-huh. this last year. <laughs> yeah, <Man>. for real. <laughs> yeah, man. I, I I I live full, die empty, man. You know. Hey, what, what, one of my. You ain't gonna give us a stock? You you ain't got nothing for us? Yeah, what I do. We, buy? we out uh, there looking. Okay, I, I like uh, right now for for get a lot of bang for your buck. I like uh, I like AT and T right now. It's in the low thirties right now. Uh, they just merged with Time Warner, so you want to, so it's a two year plan, or maybe when it goes to forty, if you want to sell, you know what I mean. You made about twenty percent profit. About yeah, about twenty percent profit. So eight times five is forty. Yeah, about twenty percent profit. So, uh, but I think it's on. I think it, I think it'll bounce back. I think AT and T, I think AT and T will be a strong stock. I just bought some. I, I I bought some in waves. You understand what I'm saying? I bought more two days ago. I bought more. I bought some uh, right after the merger or when they were planning on merging because it starts to tank. People start to people start selling. It becomes a fire sale because they just merged AT and T with Time Warner. So, uh, you know, I'll be I'll be up in I'll be up on New York Times playing with stock market and stuff like that. So. You know, it's, it's, it keeps me competitive. 
Man, I need that type of life right there. <laughs> what I got but going yeah. on is not the move. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it comes though. Man, man, for real, I I I I tell everybody, man, if you're true to yourself, yourself is your purpose. Yourself ain't your see, your bills, your friends are are what came with you being yourself. You understand? So as long as you're yourself, success is imminent. And some people become Floyd Mayweather, make a billion dollars. Some people become uh, 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 Huey P. Newton and, and inspire a, a whole generation. Some people become Malcolm X, who was my hero. Malcolm X is Jesus to me. You know, you understand what I'm saying? Like people say, "Oh, I love Jesus." I have conversations with Malcolm X. I, I'm being real as 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 candid as I can. I, I have comments. I was like, Michael, man, like, what was, like, you know, I had them WWJD bracelets. I was like, Michael, what was you doing in this situation? Like, for yeah. real. Like, like, Michael Mex is like, is like my dude, man. Like, I, I wish I could have met him. I wish, man, I, man, I wish I could have been in that Autobahn ballroom, man, to fucking save his life somehow, some way. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm being Michael Max is my hero, man. Like I love, mm-hmm. I'm getting emotional. I, I may tear up. Like Michael Max is my man. When I, I can't wait. I can't wait till my son is of age. And I can really, really delve. I, I was raised in Harlem, so like mm-hmm. I really, really excited about delving into these conversations with my son about Malcolm. And my son is a mixed kid, so I'm really, really, I'm really, really engaged with him in, in, in terms of him not being confused. You understand? Because I went to college. So, so I know about manipulating the mixed girls. I know about manipulating the white girls to get what you want out of them, and and and, and like uh, and like people not being able to relate with their identity and stuff like that. So, so those are real life issues and stuff like that. So I, but mm-hmm. I really want him to fully understand who he is, you know, man. And, and I'm excited about about us learning more about Malcolm X and me teaching him. And man, I man, I love Malcolm X, man. I celebrate his birthday. I celebrate his birthday like it's Christmas or Thanksgiving. May nineteenth, I like it's it's a holiday in my house. I, I don't I don't mess around, man. I love Malcolm X, for real. That's my hero, man. I can definitely understand that, bro. I can definitely understand yep. that one, man. So, have you ever considered transitioning into covering like another sport? Because it seems like like, would... like like boxing is a. I'm not the biggest boxing fan, and there's a lot mm-hmm. of people like like when it stopped being free. It started costing mm-hmm. hundred dollars just to see one fight. That was yeah. a tough call for me. I respect that. Ain't like that. that no more. Ain't like that. Yeah. No more. We got PBC. The PBC bringing it back. No, he, he he ain't seen Wilder fight yet, bro. You know what I'm saying? He ain't oh, seen he, oh, fight. oh, Lord. Oh, you ain't seen Wilder. Ooh, you been a Oh man, Wilder's a monster, man. He's fighting Tyson Fury in Vegas real soon. Uh, but. Uh, I covered the Clippers for some time. I didn't like it. It was too long. It was way too long. It was way <laughs> like like that season is too long. And and for real, you got to pay for parking. Like I'm like shit. I'm I'm cool. Like <laughs> like, like, <laughs> like for real. Like that. You, you think I'm I'm real? Like five and ten dollars, forty one times. Hell no. I'm not. I'm not. I'm cool with that. I'm I'm I'm. I, I'm cool. I didn't want, you know, I like boxing. I can get away for three days once a month. You know what I mean? I'll be in New York in September. September 5th, I get there. And uh, I like that, you know. I like being able to drive to Vegas. Now to have a Tesla, no gas. You know what I mean? Like, like I, you know what I mean? I, I, I like being like, feel like I'm winning. In basketball, I felt like I was losing. Getting home at 11 o'clock three times a week. Oh hell no! I don't. It, it, and it's too demanding. Like, like honestly, bo- boxers are way are way more manly than basketball players. You know, like, like their bravado is different. It's it's like uh, boxers don't really really boxers had to earn everything they had. Basketball players is is an American sport and it's a leading American sport. Maybe number two behind behind football and. Uh, so they haven't really had to earn it. I mean, they've been getting free shoes since they were six. They've been getting yeah, paid, right. and they were getting paid in high school. They get paid in college. So a lot of many things have been handed to them. So when you're interviewing them, it's like 
they feel they have a sense of entitlement per se. You, you understand what I'm saying? And I didn't like that per se. I could still do it, but uh, with the family, no way I would want to do it. You know, I, I would honestly, I would I would fib sometimes and say I went to the game and watch it on TV. You understand what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> why you like, articles what, what for real? I ain't lying. Like, why you gotta I, be there? Like, like, as long as you see it, right? Ain't that the point? Well, well, well you gotta get sound bites on the players. You understand what I'm saying? But you can use other people's sound now in social media when they do media scrums. Uh, you can well, uh, you can pull those and say that say that it's yours. You understand what I'm saying? Just the audio part. You understand? So so it's a little so it's a little bit better now. You, you understand what I'm saying? So, but um, it's uh, boxing is where it's at, man. I, I don't mess it with is. the NFL no more. So it's like, I understand uh, yeah. So it's like, boxing, I mean, it's so many different personalities, and it's and it's more relationship building. You understand? Right. Unlike NBA, there's relationship building, but it's way more intimate than boxing. Like I have all these fighters. I don't call them, but I have all these fighters' phone numbers and managers and. You understand, and it's and, and it's pretty cool. Like when they see you, they say what's up, and they and they respect you a little bit more. Basketball, man, they like, man, forget you, oh, man. I, I make forty million. I make twenty five million a year. Like I don't have to listen to you. I I make more than the co. I make more than everybody but the owner. Like who who are, who are you to me? <laughs> like nobody in this or nobody in this gym makes more than me but the owner. Chris Paul making forty million dollars a year. Mm, wow! Come on, <laughs> that's got to so, be a good job if you can get it. Yeah, it's a, yeah, it's, yeah. It's a, I mean, you build relationships. You know, I have relationships with some NBA players, but it's not like boxing. It's it's nothing like a Saturday night at Barclay. It's nothing like a Saturday night in Vegas. It's nothing like it, man. It's boxing nothing. Is like the it. best. It's the best. It is. <sighs> I just know I'm like me. I grew up. It was always a family event, but right? that was always something mm-hmm. me and my pops did was sit down and just watch fights. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? So like, I get that. It was, it's, it's ritualistic to me, man. So it's just like, you know, with your content. And that's what I, I, I noticed too, man. I've been seeing a lot of other um, platforms be, be uh, jacking your your your, um, your questions and whatnot. You know, oh yeah, content. they do it all the time. They make a lot of they money do it off all the time, it. Man. <laughs> yeah. I was like, man, Fred put that up first. <laughs> yeah, 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 they make a lot of money off me, man. And, and, and you know, I don't say anything because, you know, you, I got to see these guys next Saturday. You understand what I'm saying? Right. It's like, right. you know, I may tap them on the shoulder and be like, man, uh, you made a lot of money off my question, right? I always say, con- like, you know, sorry, Kat, like, let them know that I'm watching. You know, you understand what I'm right. saying? But, uh, right. uh, you, you know, I just, there's nothing you can do about it. You know what I mean? There's nothing you can do. But, but but everyone hears my voice, you know. Yeah, I and mean, then you're a trendsetter, bro. That's all that is. I mean, I guess they, I guess uh-huh. they call it paying homage. Or, yeah. Know, okay. Homage. I respect that. I yeah, respect I'll, that. I'll, Thank, I'll, I received that. Thank you. I received yeah, that. I appreciate it. Yeah. We about to we about to start uh, jacking your shit, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just joking. I'm getting myself bored. <laughs> hey man, so let me ask you this. You you look uh-huh. at your contact list. What's the one person in your phone if you wanna um share that? That you still mm-hmm. just be like, Wow. I got so Daryl Strawberry fucking phone. Daryl Strawberry. Daryl Strawberry. Yeah, the reason that why is a wow. I, I, Yeah. You know why I was in love? Three people, two people I was in love with, Mark Jackson and Daryl Strawberry. You know, and uh, I met Mark Jackson, but Mark Jackson is an L.A. guy now. And he's from New York. I'm from New York originally. And and, and, and ironically, Daryl Strawberry is from L.A., but he, he he's most most notable for his days in New York. And uh, I, uh, I, I had a chance to meet him in New York, and I spent a day with him. And uh, it, it was pretty dope. I was calling him, and I was like, man, are we going to meet? Are we going to meet? And I was dumb enough not to buy a baseball. I'm like, I'm not going to act like a fan. I'm not going to act like a fan, but I haven't called him <laughs> since. Well, he's probably changed his number. But but uh, Daryl Strawberry was a guy that uh, I was like, man, I fucking met Daryl Strawberry. 
Wow. And I'm interviewing this guy for like two hours. So like, it's, 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 Daryl Strawberry is my guy, like not my guy, a friend, but that was my guy, man. That was my dude. And oh man. And when he came to LA to play with the Dodgers, I was stoked. Number forty four, but he didn't pan out. He had cancer. But but he had, he had alcohol or drug problems. But uh, but when he went back to the Yankees and won some championships, he had some home runs in the playoffs. That helped a great he was a hell deal. Hell of a player. Yeah, he helped. Yeah, oh yeah, hell of a player. player. Yeah, hell of a player. Drug yeah, derailed yeah. him. He should have been Hall of Famer. Should have been Hall of Famer. Yeah. Him mm-hmm. and uh, what's the old boy name? The pitcher. Doc Gooden. Yeah. Yep. Doc Gooden. Yeah, yep. they have. Yeah, I saw that documentary they did on ESPN. Have you seen that? The Thirty for Thirty. I don't think I've seen that one on Doc Gooden. Yeah, you got to see it. It's pretty. It's pretty dope. It's pretty dope. Yeah, I gotta check that. Well, it's kind of nostalgic 30, for 30, me. Thirty so. is dope. Yeah, they all dope. How the production is amazing, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. Me like, watching shit about ice skating, and I be riveted. Yeah, <laughs> you're right. Up at three o'clock yeah, in the right. morning, skating seventeen miles, and I'm sitting there with my like, <laughs> <"Whoa, shit." laughs> You're right. Hey, baby, you know this nigga nah, you're right. Miles. Nah, you did. <laughs> nah. Hey, low key, man. Why? Why we want to talk though, man? Like swimmers, man. I don't think anybody works as hard as swimmers do, especially for the the, the minimal reward that they get for that effort. No, nah, you're they right. Swim a lot of <laughs> freaking laps. Miles. Yeah, they swim miles. And, 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 I, and you know what's funny about that is, uh, go back and listen to the uh, the interviews from uh, the Olympics when Michael Phelps was talking about how many calories he had to consume over ten thousand calories a day. Mhm. You know what I mean? Just to sustain himself. I'm like, wow, wow. That's, that's saw, insane. Yeah, I think I saw like what, what his breakfast was. It was insane. It was yeah, insane. it's it's literally insane. It's it's, yeah, it's, it's dumb. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like you pretty much your whole life is spent in the pool or eating. <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> you're right. Like, yeah, you're right. It. You know, right. and and like and if you ain't that guy, that one once in a generation swimmer, you you gonna make you know like nurse money. Mm-hmm. You're right. I get you. You know, so salute to the swimmers out there because they doing that shit for the mm-hmm. love. And oh, they are. The, oh. You know, I'm not yeah, sure what the they could there. get besides speedos. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> or if you win gold, you know, if you win gold, you got to leverage that, you know, or if you medal, you got to leverage that, you know what I mean? Yeah, you got to try, you know, but if if, uh-huh. if you, like, win gold in – I don't know, like whatever the, the marathon swimming is, you're not, you're not getting, there ain't no leverage in that. You're just taking that gold medal home and putting that shit on you. the wall. Yeah. I get you. No, you're right. But what, and if people want to get in contact with you or they want to help in any of your future endeavors, how do they go about doing Oh, that? I appreciate it. Uh, just Instagram, like Instagram, Instagram is easy. I respond so easy on Instagram because I'm always listening to music because I'm a handyman. So I'm always listening to music and stuff. I'm always working on my properties and stuff. So as soon as, soon as you hit me on Instagram, I respond as as, as quickly as I can. Silent Heroes, S I L E N T A T R O S, and um, that's the best way to get a hold of me for real. Instagram is, is like the best way. And can you? Can you email this to me? And I'm gonna post it on my channel. Oh, I damn sure will. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Matter, matter well, fact, uh, yeah. Hit me up on. Uh, matter. I think I did follow you on Instagram already too. My skin is my skin. Yeah, yeah. Your channel is blocked. Yeah, your page is blocked, so I couldn't. Uh, so I couldn't uh, share your shared uh, share what you posted. Oh, you talking about? Uh, wait a minute, which page are you talking about? Striving for my perfection. Inst- Oh no, oh, that's, that's Rome right there. No man, he you know he 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 fancy. He got to have his shit locked. No, I'm talking oh, about our page. <laughs> 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 it's my skin is my sin, and the number one is our page. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, gotcha. yeah. I did, I do believe I followed you. Matter of fact, we got a couple pages, but that's a whole other story, man. So. Uh-huh. You wake up and you got a shitload of money, man. Like how? how how does that feel? 
if, honestly, I only think about it when uh, when I have to pay for something. Honestly, like 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 honestly, when a bill comes, like oh shit, I can pay it. Like honestly, I I listen to Will Smith all the time. He said his biggest fear is not having what he's earned. You understand? And like my biggest fear, I'm so frugal. <laughs> like for real, I am I am like dangerously frugal. You know what I mean? Like. Like, I know on social media it may seem like that, that, that I do a lot of dispersion because I go out a lot, but half that stuff is free. Like, when I go to concerts and stuff, do con- friends and all that, you know, half that stuff is literally free. And But it's like, uh, it, it's a blessing, man, like, for real. And, 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 and you know, I look at my son and my daughter sometimes, and I tell Dre, I'll be like, Dre, Dre. These kids will never, ever know what I really, really know what I've gone through to get to this place. And she doesn't grasp it neither because she come from a two-parent household. They worked. You understand? The family bought a property for the kids, and they end up splitting it. You understand what I'm saying? And they, and they made an immense amount of money on that. So she, she, she only knows raising the kids the, quote, unquote, atypical way. But honestly, I have moments sometimes. I look at my kids and I say, God damn. But the most beautiful thing is I don't have to worry about it when they're 18. I just got to teach them the disciplines. You know what I mean? Uh, once I teach them the disciplines, it's, it's, uh, that, that's, that, that's my fear, honestly. Like, but we're waking up, it, it, it feels good though. Let me tell you, let me tell you, it feels good. I, I ain't gonna front with you. Like I ain't gonna front with you. I ain't gonna front. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna front. It's, it's it feels good. Like, like honestly, it, it it genuinely feels good. And, and 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 I'll be real with you. I had money before I knew I, I had money. People are gonna say you're fucking crazy. Excuse me. People are gonna think you're crazy. I said no. About three years ago, I realized. I said, holy cow. But mind you, I had I had my nose in the dirt. For like three uh-huh. or four years prior, but I never looked up. You understand? And then when I went to to like buy something, I'm like, oh, I can afford it. Like I've never knew that I can afford something that was worth X amount of dollars. I never knew that for 37 years, 36 years. You understand what I'm saying? And I and I wake up and and uh, Dre is like, you can afford that. And I'm like, I can. Remind you, I had 34 years of training, 33 years of training, like, you're broke, you hustle, you grind, you wake up, you go, you grind, you grind, you grind, you grind. So I, I, only, knew, I only knew that. But now it's like, uh, it's refreshing, but I want $20 million, man. Like, I want to be worth $20 million by the time I'm 50. And, 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 and if I don't, I, I failed myself. You understand, and 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 that's my that's my goal to be worth twenty million. I got I got nine more years, so I I want to be worth. I'm 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 doing I'm doing the best I can. You know what I mean? I'm really really doing the best I can. You know what I mean? Man, that's man, I already got grand, car, like a house. job and moving to Arkansas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's like moving to Peru, right? <laughs> Right. <laughs> Hopefully people think that's funny, man. That, that, that's no that's no shade on Arkansas. I've been to Arkansas, or Kansas, as people call it. You know, so. But I've yeah. been to Blysville, and that shit was actually like going to Peru. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm not even going front. Hey, you, you know, know what I did? I did that drive in like 30 minutes. I did from the Miss. Have you, I, I, I went because Mississippi, Mississippi, Tennessee, and Arkansas. I did that drive in like 25 or 30. I said, I want to see how fast I can get through three states. So I just did that drive because I was just in Memphis with nothing to do. Uh-huh. That's so, some beautiful shit right uh, there. You know, I'm just, just, just rolling around Memphis. I'm bored. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much what it was. Right out. So yeah. I'm doing something yeah. wrong with my life, fellas. I got to change some shit. Bet this, 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 on yourself. Come up with something. Hey, no, man. no, and that's the key. That's the key. Whatever you think of is is right. Whatever you think of is the is the exact answer that you need. That's, you just got. I like talking to people just, on the radio. Maybe I'll make you, money on you, it one day. No, you can. And 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 the key to that is every. See, here's the thing. Every time you open up your mouth, you're on the radio. Do you understand where I'm coming from? I do. 
Okay, good. Every time you open your mouth, you're on the radio. It's not when you have a microphone in front of you. Every time you open your mouth, you're on the radio. Like I told a guy who wanted me to invest in, in one of his projects, and he says, man, man, I just, I, I swear, I swear to you, he said, uh, he said, uh, we're conversing through text. He says, uh, man, I've been trying to get it through Netflix, man. And he, he sent me this, this YouTube page and was like, check this out. And he's like, man, I'm trying to get the YouTube. And I, I mean, not YouTube. I'm trying to get this to Netflix and everything. I says, I says, well, why are you not treating me like Netflix? I don't have Netflix money. I don't have Netflix money. I, I'll be first to tell you. I don't have the Netflix power of, of influence. But if you're going to be, if you're going to be uh, eight minutes early for Oprah, for the interview with Oprah, you better be eight minutes early for the interview at McDonald's. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like he told me, call you at 4.15. As soon as the clock, as soon as it said 4.15 on my phone, I hit send. I didn't wait till 4.16. For, on my phone, it said 4.15. I don't know what your clock said, but my clock said 4.15, and, and I hit send. You understand where I'm coming from? So, so at the end of the day, that's, that's the practice of the discipline. And then one day, I swear to God to you, a million-dollar check is going to fall from the sky. It may be eight checks, so you may only get like 50000 You may only cash 50000 by 25. You may cash 150 by 30, 30. You may cash 250 by 40. But a million-dollar check, I guarantee you, will fall from the sky. I have no doubt in that because that's my life. That's literally wow. my life. You understand where I'm coming from? Every time I interview somebody, I'm interviewing Floyd Mayweather. Mm. I, every, every time. I, 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 don't, I don't take it for granted that, hey, I know Sam Watson, he's my friend. I treat them with the same decorum, same respect. You can go through all my interviews. I, don't, I, I, don't, I, I, I give them their space, and if I'm wrong, I apologize and keep on going. You understand? Everybody I interview mm-hmm. for the sake so, so, so people can understand is Floyd Mayweather. I'm very deliberate. I'm very calm. I let them finish their statement, you know, and, 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 and that's, a, uh, that's a, a skill that everyone must develop. Everyone's born with great talents. Everyone is born with great talents. But I want the one who has a skill to inspire everyone to turn their talents into skills. You understand? Uh, that's why we got food teachers, you understand, parents and mentors like you and, you know what I mean, who just in these streets inspiring and encouraging and, you know what I mean, like everyone deserves the alchemy. I'm not sure if you read that. Have you read The Alchemist? I have not. Ooh, you better read that book. <laughs> you better read that book. Oh, oh, that book is special. That book is special. That book is special, Wait, man, The Alchemist. Yeah, it, oh, it, 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 it's special. Yeah, yeah it's going to take you on a journey. Any further, um... I do want to let people know that you are tuned in to My Skin Is My Sin Radio on Blog Talk Radio and YouTube Live. From goons to gods, we welcome everyone. We only have one rule, and that's be respectful. You want to call up, the number is 347-855-8692. you got to press 1 to get on air. And tonight, My Skin Is My Sin presents Barbershop Conversations with Frederick Hawthorne. And if you have missed the first hour, something is wrong with you because my man's life is like just a, an incredible story of perseverance and success, to say the least. Mm-hmm. All right, my, my bad, but I just had to do the little station identification. I know, I got you, I got you. Show. You know, I try to keep it professional at least 30 seconds out the show. <laughs> I respect all that. I respect all that. I respect all that. Genuinely, I, that's real talk. You know, um, damn, what was it I was going to ask you? And uh, oh, Floyd Mayweather, he get a bad rap from a lot of brothers, man. Myself uh-huh. included, have talked my fair shit about Floyd Mayweather. What is he really like? Floyd Mayweather is it like for real, one on one? Floyd Mayweather is my dude. Like, for real, Floyd, Floyd Mayweather is my dude one-on-one. In public, I got to respect what he created. You understand where I'm coming from? Right. Like, gotcha. in public, when he's, he, he's Floyd Money Mayweather in public. You got to respect that. That's who he is. That's the persona he created, and that's what made him a billion dollars. Privately, I, I literally can ask Floyd, like, people don't really understand, like, for real, for real. 
I can ask Floyd, hey, Floyd, I need a favor. I'm sure he'll do it. I can't ask for 10 favors. You know, he's a busy man. But I, but if I really wanted something from Floyd, I got all four of his, five of his phone numbers. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's uh, like, Floyd has been a blessing. Like, <laughs> Floyd has been a blessing to me, man. Like, uh, he, I, I did a movie with he, he and Sam Watson, you know, was paid handsomely for that, you know. I mean, Ford always looks out for me. Like, like for example, I did a celebrity basketball game about mm-hmm. three weeks ago. I was the only guy he interviewed with. You know, like, mm-hmm. like I just go in the middle of his bodyguards and he talks to me. Like, man, Ford, man, I wish Floyd talked about all the things that he does, man. I wish he did, man. I wish he did, like, for real. I mean, he has some quirks about him. He's not perfect, and neither am I, and neither are you. But the things he does in Vegas, the things he does in Grand Rapids, oh, man, like, I know these stories, and I think it's better coming from him, you know? Like, I mean, he's literally – I know of two people he saved from doing over 20 years in jail. Mm, Dope. Giving them or paying for their lawyers. You understand? Making sure that they okay. Relocating them. You understand where I'm coming from? Like, I mean, two real like, people. Like, it ain't, it ain't like, oh, you read in the book and maybe, like, uh, he said, oh, I'll uh, call me if you need me. No. They call Floyd. He, he sends his private jet to pick him up. He gives them $100,000 to pay for their lawyer. I don't know how much to work. But I'm, th- th- that's just a guesstimation. And right. they, they get the job done. You know, I know of two people, two people, and it's probably more, but I know of two, you know, and uh, I, I wish he talked about that more. You know, I really wish he talked about that more, you know, because people only know the guy who has a lot of money and loves beautiful women and the greatest boxer of this era, you know, so people only know TBE, TBE plus money and the woman, you know what I mean? So, but yeah, so does, he, uh, so does does he like call you over for cookouts or be like, yo, I'm getting the house clean. I got 10 days working. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, man. But, but Floyd is my dude. Floyd is my dude. Like, for real. Floyd is my dude. And um, for real, like, like, like how I talk to you is how I talk to Floyd. Like, it, it ain't – I thank God that I have a relationship with him. I, I'm, I'm always grateful. But how I talk to – I mean – Ford is pretty normal to me now. Like, you know, I'm a, I've been around him. I was I was around him after Conor McGregor camp. Like, he's pretty normal to me. Floyd is like, Floyd is like I'm talking to you. Like, swear to God, it ain't nothing special about me talking to Floyd anymore. <laughs> That's dope. That's dope. All right, so what, uh, let me ask you this: greatest uh-huh. boxer of all time. <sighs> the greatest boxer, the greatest offensive fighter I've ever seen. Is Roy Jones Jr. I'm talking with my own eyes. People say I don't like dealing with people that I've seen on 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 film because then it opens up a hundred years of boxing. But since I've been in boxing since like 1988, uh, I was like 10 or 11 years old. Floyd is Floyd Mayweather is the most complete fighter I've ever seen. Roy Jones is the most offensive juggernaut I've ever, most physically skilled guy I've ever seen in the ring. But in terms of composite. Floyd Mayweather in terms of offense, defense, mental game, not taking no punishment, delivering punishment. Floyd Mayweather is the best. As far as pure talent, had to be had to be Roy Jones Jr. When he knocked old boy out with the rib shot, I was like, wow. Oh, Roy? Yeah, I can't remember. I don't even yeah. remember the dude's name. But when I oh, saw I that, the guy with the dude, afro. Oh, dude just crumpled up like, oh, oh that hurt so bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey. Roy is that dude, man. Roy was that dude, man. Roy was so Roy was that dude. dude. But I can't give it to anybody in the color TV era. Like, them brothers that was fighting them white boys back in the 20s and 30s and 40s and 50s, uh-huh. like, just stepping in the ring was literally life and death. Uh-huh. They know getting up that white boy. They could literally get hung at the end of that boy and still went in there and whooped their ass. So I get and I'm, you. And my, a home, I'm a hometown favorite too, so I got to go with Joe Lewis. Joe Lewis, okay, I respect that. I, yeah. I, I get you. I mean, I mean, he's one of the best. 
you know, if not the best. I mean, he set the tone as the first great pound for pound guy. You know what I mean? One of them. You know, he was a. He, <laughs> I I seen a lot of his fights. He, the kid was special, man. The kid was special. You know what I mean? The Brown Bomber. You know. And shout out to Tommy yeah, Hearns too. You know, another another yeah, I wish, uh, kid from back in the uh, day. Oh really? Okay. Yeah. I uh. I wish he hadn't retired on the loss to Rocky Marciano, but outside of outside of that with Joe Lewis, yeah. I, I, uh, I'm a huge fan, obviously, right? But, uh, so, but yeah. yeah. Who's your uh, top five pound for pound right now? Right now, hmm. Someone asked me this the other day. Terrence Crawford. Terrence Crawford, number one. Uh, number two, who, who, number two, maybe I would have Lomachenko number three, somebody else is number two, I can't, number four, maybe, Earl Spence is not active enough, but I see him cracking it, you know what I mean, like, he hasn't proven right. himself to be top five, I like Deontay Wilder as my fifth, I know he's a heavyweight, but I like Deontay Wilder as my fifth. I like Lomachenko at three. I like Terrence Crawford at one. I'm missing two and four. Uh, two and Mikey. four. Mikey Garcia? Oh, Mikey would be four. Mikey would be four. That's good. Right. Number two. Uh, mm. it's, it's tough. Um, yeah, it's tough. But Terrence Crawford is clear cut number one because what he did at unifying at 140. Right, 140, right, right. Yeah, I got yeah. I mean, I had – I had Bud number two. Well, I got Bud number one now, but Andre Ward was my my number one, you know, until he retired. Yeah, yeah, he, he was everybody's number one. You know, he retired, though. Can we still count him? No, no. Okay, all right, all right. I'm about to say shit. He's number one, Terrence Crawford number two. <laughs> nah, nah. nah. <laughs> I want to say thanks for making my job easier. You know what I mean? Thank you for making my life easier. But, uh, nah. man, number two, that's a tough question. That is a, that that's is a real tough. number two. Because, I mean, Bud, Bud's number one because he, he's unified in tied division. You know, over mm-hmm. 40. So I kept him number one, you know, at that, even though he moved up and he got a belt already. So I kept him mm-hmm. number one. Okay. Two, and maybe Loma. I don't know. Maybe Loma number two. Yeah, yeah, you can put, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. fair. That's fair. That's totally fair. Though maybe yeah, if was, Triple G, if Triple G beats Canelo, I'll reserve two or three for him. That's fair. That's fair too. That's fair too. You know what I mean? Because I mean, at the end of the day, I know his. I know his. I know he's been matched up against some bums. I know he hasn't. But I mean, I thought he won the first one. He knocked out. He knocked out the kid in June or May. And and, and if he beats right. Canelo and Press, it's Press, but he's somewhere in there. He's somewhere in there. Yeah. If he you know, know what I mean? And he's, he's, he's on his way out. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. Give him flowers while he's alive and let him go. You know. But uh, but yeah, he'll be in it. But I like Deontay Wilder cracking the top five. I know he's a heavyweight, but I like how he's doing it. I I really like how he's doing it, knocking everybody once out. Once he knocks Fury out, yeah. Once he knocks Fury out, he he definitely gonna be up there. He, yeah, absolutely I, right. And I, yeah. I, I I appreciate I appreciate the work that y'all put in and championing Wilder, bro. Because like, I've been talking uh-huh. to Wilder for the past three four years, and mm-hmm. you know people always people always got something to say. You know, as far as the technique. Don't matter. They going to sleep. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like that, that right, that right hand connect is over with. And oh man, that right hand is special. Yeah, that right hand is, is legendary, man. Like that, that transcends generations. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, he got ans- hey, hey, he got ancestry power, man. Yes, yes. You know what I mean? Like, like for real, like Deontay Wilder, son. I, I can't. I, I'm, I'm gonna call him and set up uh, uh, for me to go down there in early October to go cover his camp. But yeah. I, I just want to be around the guy. You know what I mean? Like he and I was on the phone for two hours, maybe a month, month and a half ago. You know what I mean? It was supposed to be a ten minute interview. It ended up being two hours. Like I told him, I love him. Like I, I, I genuinely love him, and, and I love what he represents, man. Like yeah. I love. I can't wait to have those conversations about like Alabama. You know, Jim Crow, KKK, and since I'll be in his hometown, it makes it great to have these conversations, you know, and I think I'm one of the few people that can, 
You know, a white reporter can't go down there and, and, and open up Deontay Wilder and talk about the, right. these things. You know? But I right. think it's just essential that we see, like, the in-depth side of that side in his hometown, right. you know, in, in addition to him being the baddest man on the planet, you know, in which he is. Right. He, he's, right. you know, brother, he's the, the baddest man on the planet on so many different levels. That's a fact. It, it, it makes you proud to see a black heavyweight champion, the way he carries himself, the way he mm-hmm. interacts with the people. You know, like, mm-hmm. it just makes you feel like you wanted, to, you, you wanted to own. You know, like, he yeah. you know where he's from. You know, he fits right in, man. Like, I love seeing that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I'm a huge fan. A huge fan. And uh, can't wait. I, 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 I can't wait to see him again because what he did last week was pretty awesome, too. You know, him going down to uh, – him going overseas, you know, and, and setting up and the fight. Dude, right. And the, the, I seen a, uh, one of them crazy cats threw a bear on him or something, right? Yeah, that's disgusting, that's man. Belfast. Right. Right. That was insane. That's, the, that, that's disgusting, man. It's like, at the end of the day, enjoy it. It, it is great to be a fan. Like – it is it is a compliment to you that you can afford to be a fan. Enjoy the experience. Right. Right. You understand? Like, he, he was in the two hundred dollar seat. Three hundred. He was on the floor, right? Two hundred, three hundred dollar seat. I don't know. I'm guesstimating. You know. Enjoy that. Enjoy Deontay Wilder walking by you and you booing him. Enjoy that experience. But to take right. it over to the take it over to the other level, you know what I mean? It's just. That's really assault, you know. What I mean, if Deontay Wilder wanted to press charges on him, he actually probably could. I don't know if the rules are over there, but that's assault. Well, he better you know? be uh, whoever whoever that was a friend in Wilder, because he was gonna get decapitated. <laughs> Wilder and Wilder is that dude too. Wilder is that dude. Wilder is. is, is yeah. I have no doubt. If honestly, there's two people in boxing that I would think of off the top of my head. I would want if I was in a street fight, Terrence Crawford mm-hmm. and Deontay Wilder. You know what I mean? Those are two dudes right. I would say, hey, hey, these Crips are chasing me down the street. You know what I mean? Like, hey, help me. <laughs> Save my life. <laughs> Terrence Crawford, Deontay Wilder, for real. You know. Yeah, they, uh, do it, man. They, they give you that feel. They definitely give you that feel. Yeah, they, no, they do. Oh, for sure. For sure. Yeah. Real one. Yeah, I got me kind of like a little room. hype about boxing now. Like, Rome, you're going to have to send me some clips now. I want to see some shit. I told you, listen, oh, yeah. bro, it's, the, it's the best sport. It's the best sport out. Man, don't you know Deontay Wilder knocked out Bermain Severn before he threw a punch? He didn't throw a punch that oh, fight. His God, punches, right. He had punch stats that are perfect, zero, zero, zero. <laughs> Power punches, jabs, none landed. He was like, zero. He didn't throw a punch. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to send you that clip. Like, you want to talk about, you want to talk about not, like, Chris Tucker, first Friday, knock the F out. Yo, yeah. That's, that's the yeah. fight, bro. That's yeah, you got to sit on those knees, too. Deontay yeah. Wilder says, I, I didn't just knock him out. I turned him into a meme. <laughs> that's, that's that. <laughs> like, you ever seen, like, I've never seen, well, I've seen it, but, yo, his his knees were inward. Both knees, not one knee. Yeah. Like, he, like, he made him do yoga. <laughs> Like he was yoga posing after he had knocked out. <laughs> You're right. You're right. He was yoga posing. That's funny. That's funny. Yeah, he was yoga That's posing, real. bro. It's real. Like it was, real. It was so bad. And the, the main Severn talked so much shit going to the second fight because why they ain't knocking I'm, out. I'm going to die in the rain. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going to you have to check that out. He was sounding like Satan, right? Right. <laughs> mm. Yeah, it was bad. It was bad for him, man. That was so bad. Like, it's no other mm-hmm. word. To... Oh my god, that was a... that's the worst knockout I've seen in a minute. Since, uh... Oh, that was that was that was debilitating for sure. Yeah, yeah. Hey, bro. So, uh, hey. do you promote also? I want I you know what I think when I get to like uh like fifty sixty thousand subs and stuff like that I think I'm a I'm a uh, move towards that you know what I mean like move towards like uh like creating like promotional ventures with fighters and stuff like that and you understand where I'm coming from I I think that'd be a successful venture 
Absolutely. I think so too. That makes that makes yeah, a lot of sense. Mm-hmm. You know, you know what I mean? it sounds like you got some done huge things yet. coming down the pike. I hope so. I genuinely hope so because because keep in mind when you get to a certain number on YouTube and certain number of videos, I got thousands of videos. Like they forever making you money. I know it's one dollar a day from this video, two dollars a day from that video, but it's forever. It's perpetuity. So you always gonna get a check from YouTube. You understand what I mean? Right. Uh, no. So I ain't made no money. No, but it will though when you when you get to. <laughs> hey, believe me, I was like that for a year and a half. I'll keep it real with you. Um, it, it's it's like uh, over time, it's gonna add up, and and then when you get to a uh, certain number of videos, like people just gonna people just go to your page just because, or people just Google like something that you did and it's and it's gonna it's gonna be first on the list or something like that. So you always get some videos may only make five cents that month, you know, but a dollar, two dollars, it all adds up. But you'll be getting a check every month, which is pretty cool. Man, we going to the club. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just... Hopefully, that, that, hopefully, that hopefully one, you ain't dancing and she me. is, right? Right. <laughs> Shit. Give me J. Oh, I don't goodness. dance in the club. I watch dancers now, right? That's what my boy always tells me. I ain't dancing. I don't dance no more. Man, I ain't been they to the dance. club and I don't know how long. I, I would officially be the old creepy guy in the club. Yeah, yeah, you're right. We we all go through that phase, right? Like, I don't want to go. You know, I, I I ain't messing with no club. You know, I mean, we all go through that phase for real. <laughs> I just That's never wanted to be that dude. And you know what? Like like, and I'm I'm gonna keep it a stack totally off topic. But after I went to Freak Nick, going to clubs were never the same. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Any, any story that starts with after I went to Freak Nick, like, <laughs> it's never the same, bro. You know, some things alter your life, man. Freak Nick just, just, it just altered my whole DNA about partying. And after that, it was like, really, yeah, it just like man, that like it, it will never be matched. So every mm. club was is, is is just like a, a a little more disappointment of my life. Mm. And I got enough. <laughs> you know, unless, unless my wife she want to go to the club, we gonna go to the club. Yeah, you can do that with her at, to yeah. to say the least, right? Yeah, you know. Other than that, no, it's not gonna be like, hey fellas, y'all want to go to the club tonight? No, bro, why are you asking me that? No, I want to be entertained now. I I go to a lot of concerts, man. I enjoy being entertained now. You know, I want to sit my my butt down and listen to some music. You Who's know, best some comedy. Live the best live performance I've ever been to was Prince. Mm. I say that without hesitation. Prince, 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 Prince. Three hour performance. I got to see him for twenty five dollars on back to back nights. Most amazing. He would come out on his bicycle, ride his bike. He was just mostly. He was the most eclectic guy mentally you ever want to say you know he he just believed in living he didn't believe in like how we have genres and and, and to his credit because i couldn't be him i couldn't wear high heels and platforms and you know what i mean wear what i want to wear i'm not built like that so, so i applaud him like he literally just <laughs> believed in living you know and uh but he I had a great life he's the said. greatest to me like, and that's not even that's not a question to me. He's like the greatest uh, artist in any genre to me. Man, oh, there you go. I wake up my daughter every morning to uh, "You're the Most Beautiful Girl in the World," man. So, I uh, I uh, I have admiration for Prince. So Prince will forever live 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 in the Hawthorne family. You know. That's dope. That's dope. So so mm-hmm. what's the the one? Greatest thing being a father has taught you. You know what? Um, in addition, um, I can easily say selfish, selflessness, not selfish, selflessness, uh, omnipotent love. But you know what is? But you know what? Like, like really, honestly, 
it empowers the manhood out of you. Mm. You understand? Like, I'm a man. I like, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I, I teach my son to be a man. I, I, like, I don't pick, like, for example, like, I, I wouldn't pick my son up. I kiss my daughter. Like, I open up the door for Dre. I open up the door. I uh, always make sure Lincoln, Lincoln goes and open up mom's door. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, I love being a man. Like, Lincoln be dragging the groceries up the stairs. You know what I mean? He's, he's going to grow into that strength. But, you know, just, just teaching them them habits. You know what I mean? Putting dresses on my daughter. Like, like, you know, like, like, like being a man, like taking out the trash. Me and Lincoln taking out the trash Monday night. You know what I mean? Like, you know, like being, like, you are, I, I am a man to my two kids. You know what I mean? And I, I love that. That is like, mm, I love it, man. man. I thank you for asking that question. Like, I, I, I love being a father, man. Man, like, we're going to the dining room. Like, like, some beautiful shit, bro. You have uh, kids? Oh, yeah. They, I have three grown kids. Oh, man. Three <laughs> grown. Man. Daughters. I, I'll, I'll, get, I'll get to your level one day. Someday. I'm, eight, I'm about 18 years bro. old. And you know the uh-huh. crazy part yeah. about it is that I always envision myself being that, like, crazy-ass father and rah, 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 and the young nigga trying to get my daughter. And it was nothing like that, man. They made good, you know, we tried to, me and my ex tried to get them a good example, and they made good decisions. We didn't have to go through mm-hmm. all that shit. That's why it bothers me, like, when I see guys post a pic of them and they, they daughter at prom, and you got three other niggas with guns. Mm-hmm. Like, what is that saying to your daughter? What it's telling me is you did a really poor job as a father and you don't trust her. Mm-hmm. She chose this yeah. man to go to this kid to go to prom with. Give her mm-hmm. the, the credit that she made a good decision. Mm. Give yourself the credit that you raised her to make a good decision. Mm. Nah. Right. All right. My bad. Yeah, I, I get um, on my soapbox about parenting, bro. No. Now you know what you were thinking when you was going to prom, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah I know. Know. And you know, and you know what? My prom what date, saying. Mama said she had to be back in the house at nine fucking o'clock, and her ass was back in the house at nine o'clock. Nothing happened. Nah, uh, it ain't go like that for me, bro. Are you like, I, I, one? I, yeah, you picked the wrong girl. Yes, yes, I did. <laughs> yes, yes. I mean, that's the story to that, though. Like, uh, I picked somebody that was a- absolutely gorgeous. But mm-hmm. that went to another school. That was kind of like a crucial thing. But I asked her like in, I don't know, like October. You know, she mm-hmm. was my backup. She knew she was my backup. Come prom time, I had, you know, some faux show. And my uh-huh. mother was like, I'm not paying for anybody but so-and-so. You going with uh-huh. her. Mm-hmm. And needless to say, my prom sucked. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that, that's it. We were back at the crib by 9 o'clock. Mm-hmm. So, so, so what'd you do hey. at nine on one? Oh, we went to the hotel. I was joking, man. I was a joke. I was taking a shot oh. at you, man. You answered the question. Oh. <laughs> hey, I still didn't end up doing shit though. Like by the time we got to the hotel, everybody else had already gotten to whatever it is they was gonna get into. And uh, I got man, you. I had the wackest prom night in the history of whack prom nights. I guess it could have been whacker if somebody like sprayed me with water or. You know, I got beat up like somebody in the movies or something, but nope. Mm-hmm. It's a lonely ass depressing prom night. But the night after was dope. Mm. Yeah, prom kind of like cool. how, how life I, is though. Yeah. You Your know, life. Big shit sometimes don't. <laughs> well, well, yeah, apparently, apparently it is my life, man. Because <laughs> my uh. life is not anywhere near as dope as your shit. You know, I look through my uh. my my contacts and I'm like, damn, that's just my brother. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you look at it, you got Daryl Strawberry. <laughs> mm-hmm. Life is great for you, bro. No, actually, I like life too, man. Life is good. Mhm. You know, um, damn, I didn't talk myself out of a question. I was about to ask you something. So what's the what's the uh, what's the the one interview that you you've done in your career that you look back on and was like, damn, I just interviewed such and such. Well, you was you was starstruck. Never been starstruck. Okay. I've 
I've been like, uh, and you know when those interviews happen, mm-hmm. not not starstruck, but but when you're going somewhere, it's in the interview. Like I interviewed Austin Trout, uh, June 16th or June 9th, was it on the Jamel Trout? And uh, I was listening, to, and, and I was just interview, not just Austin Trout is a former world champion. I, I was just I was just interviewing him because just for the sake of the fight. Mm-hmm. It wasn't right. supposed to be nothing special. Nothing special, you know. Who are you fighting? I know you've been getting the short end of the stick. You know, people don't respect you. And this guy t- went to went to a place. I was like, oh, snap. That's, a, that's the most recent one, you know. Uh, yeah. He and Deontay Wilder. You understand? I was like, wow, this guy is taking me somewhere. And when you don't expect it, you understand what I'm saying? I was like, man, mm-hmm. Austin Trout is a... Uh, <laughs> Austin Trout's a deep brother, man. Oh man, Austin Trout's a deep brother, man. I, I I was sitting there, I was I was sitting like I had no response to it, so I would just ask, yeah. so I would just ask him to talk about a word he just said. You know what I mean? Like like I was like, you're going too deep for me, Austin. I'm not I'm not ready for that yet. I just <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> oh man, I can't swim in a twelve foot pool, Austin. Like what are you where are you going? You know what I mean? But right. but like like. <laughs> He was, he was teaching me, and I was like, I never thought it from that. I've never thought of it from that perspective. Wow, you know. And uh, I, uh, I'm honored I got that interview. That was June 9th, I believe. That he was on the undercard of uh, Leo Santa Cruz after S too, you know. And uh, that was a phenomenal interview. Like it was, it was only ten minutes. It was only ten minutes, you know, nothing really. But that that's the one that stands out when it comes out of nowhere. You like, wow, we're going somewhere. You know. Okay. So let me ask you this: outside of boxing, and they they got to be alive. Who would be the one person you'd like to interview? They got to be alive. Yeah. Okay. Ooh. Because I know like, like, like they can't Malcolm be dead. Uh huh. Okay, so obviously dead would be Malcolm X, but boxer alive that I haven't interviewed. No, no, that's not a boxer. Oh, that's not a boxer. Ooh, excluding Malcolm X, that's that's the easy answer. Uh, they gotta be living. Uh huh. Oh, they gotta be alive today. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, I have it. Whew. Hmm. If. Honestly, no disrespect. No, I, I would uh, not, not, not him, not him. No, not him. Uh, <laughs> man, who would I want to interview? Oh, uh, man, dead. I mean, ah, oh, George Foreman, maybe George Foreman, George Foreman. Uh, I'll give you a better yeah. than George Foreman because technically he's still boxing, but. But he's been retired so long. Oh, that, oh, just, oh! A boxer that's still boxing. Oh, no, 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 no! Uh, somebody uh, that's not, uh, not, uh, not a boxer at all, like Oprah. Oh, or, not a boxer at all. Or, that's or a lie. Jay Z. Jay Z. Jay Z or LeBron James. Why Jigga? You know he he's done something, whether it's true or false, or he's telling fairy tales and it's half true. He's done something that. Is they make movies out of that don't necessarily come true. He has gone through the gamut of being a man to a man's man to a married man and now a father. If if you understand what I'm saying, from selling drugs to uh, being a womanizer to uh, to cheating on his wife, to professing his love for his wife, raising his beautiful kids, and now being a mogul. Like, like, like for real, for real, that's like, 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 you know, many of us just get to the married part. He done turned it into like, like a mogul. Like he's like, he's walking on water right now. You understand? He's bailing people out of jail. He's creating these documentaries on Trayvon Martin. And the other kid that happened at Rutgers, Rutgers Island, I forget the kid's name, you know, like, he's moving the culture. 
he's paying he he has his own streaming company he has his own agency like you know he's you yeah, know and LeBron James is like I know I'm gonna meet LeBron see, see the great thing is I know I'm going to talk to LeBron at some point you know he's in LA now for at least four years I'm destined to run into LeBron James you know at the movie premiere boxing event a big boxing event in Vegas you know he'll catch a private jet up there and I'll see him you know what I mean? I'll try and try and infiltrate his team somehow. You know what I mean? Like, but I know like at some point I'm gonna meet LeBron James, and hopefully it is for for an extended period of time. I don't want no handshake or can I get your order? I, I want to sit down and like have a conversation with him. You know, black in America type conversations. You know, like from start to finish. So LeBron James and Jay Z. You know, Dame Dash will make my JV. You know. Yeah, oh, I'm not out of disrespect, but I would like to interview Dame Dash. You know what I mean, like. Because you never you know, know. I think Dame Dash would say some shit. Mhm. Will Smith, Dame Dash, next my JV. You know what I mean. So those four men. Jay Z being Sway. one, LeBron being two. Sway. Sway. From, uh, yep. Sway oh, you want to interview Sway? Today. Yes. Oh yes. Hey, Sway got. You know what? I should. I'm. I messed up. I spent a whole day with Sway. No, I'm being real. I'm being real, but because we were in a boxing environment, I forgot about his Oakland ties. I, you know, you know of it. You know his Bay Area ties. You know of it. Like you, like oh no, Sway is from the Bay. Now he lives in New York. He's been doing media for thirty years. You know what I mean? You know he got the dreads, MTV, all that. You know, we get all of that. But I forgot. Like honestly, I'm glad you said that because I know I'm going to see Sway. And when I get there in September, and I'm like, I-, I need to sit Sway down. I really need to sit Sway down and have a conversation with him because I know I'm going to see him. I know I'm going to see him, you know, because he's well, great friends with supporters. So I know I'm going to see him. Yeah, oh, oh, Sway, oh, man, hands down. I spent a half a day with him. I, I spent like six hours with him. I spent like six hours, and it was just, it, we, we, we were just, we were just bullshitting, like, you know, hanging like, like like real ones, you know what I mean? Like you know, like like like, like cousins, like, like cousins you see in the summertime, you know. You know, you go down to Virginia and you hang out with your. Co- that, that's what it was like, you know. Everything was light and moving forward, talking smack, you know, talking about our past experiences, you know. So it, it was real cool, you know. I man, I'm mad I didn't that's talk to Dope right there. Yeah, I'm mad I didn't talk to Dope. Like, damn. Yeah, I'm kind of that mad for you there, that bro. Been, yeah, that that would have been cool. <laughs> that would have been cool, At the very man. least, we're going to chop it up about some hip-hop. About who? Yeah, right. Hip-hop. Oh, hip-hop, for sure. Hip-hop. But he goes deeper than hip-hop, you know what I mean? He's a, he's a deep dude, you know what I mean? Yeah, he's a deep dude. I, 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 I'll see him at some point in New York. I will. And I know I'll be able to spend some time with him, so that'll be awesome. That will be dope, man. Tag me if you do the interview mm-hmm. too, bro. Oh, Let well, for sure. for sure. For sure. For sure. Yeah, for sure. I'll look at it and cry a little bit. <laughs> dope. Oh, yeah. and Redman. Redman would be another. Uh... Really? Redman. Yeah, Redman and actually Luther Campbell. Luther would be an interesting interview. It, it, it would be an interesting If you're strong interview. enough. If, yeah, if you're strong enough to go there with Luther as a person doing the interview. That would be a great. That would be a great interview. I mean, he beat that. He beat. He beat the government. Oh Yo, man, he did. He done lived ten lives, man. Luther Campbell man. done lived ten lives. And you know what? I know his background dancers. You just. <laughs> I know him personally. I I, I, I officially want your life now, bro. No, 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 <laughs> no. My boy smashed one. My boy has a relationship. Had a relationship with one. And I was like, and when we hung out, because they do that, that hip-hop thing out here in Long Beach once a year, and they perform out every year. So, oh, that's interesting. I, I, I forgot I, I had, I've never met him, though. But I, I forgot that I had that connection. I should push yeah, up on like, that connection. In the, in the scope, the landscape of hip-hop, he does not get enough credit for that, that one case alone. You're right. And being a trailblazer, we're going to do this bad. music my way. Yeah. We gonna do it my way. One thing I can say, Luke said he the mayor. He is the mayor, bro. Like when I lived in South Florida, 
every Friday. And I'm talking about this is mid 2000s. Like, wow. They still play two live crew on Friday. They still really? bump all that stuff. Yes. Yes. They still play all that stuff. Like Luke. Luke is the mayor. There's no no question. Really? About that. Yes. Yeah, that Miami loves him. Like the whole Florida loves him. Man, Detroit mm. loves two live crew. Like they, really? they absolutely could do no wrong in Detroit. Like Luke could probably be seventy years old, do a concert, and there'd be a whole bunch of old seventy and eighty year old people there. Mm. Still rock old old, old ass nasty old lady Ferguson. I mean, but we only mm. what, about ten, fifteen <laughs> years away from like like all of the the quote unquote old radio stations is playing nothing but hip hop. Mm. Yeah, that's true. That's true. You know, they're getting close, ah, man. Now. Yeah, oh yeah, they get <laughs> for sure, for sure. Man, I'm a huge man. I grew up on that shit. You know, I I was a little kid. You know, thought I knew what the hell I was doing. You know, I, I had no girl back then, but you but you know, you lie and say you got ten girlfriends. You know, you you know, but you know, between that <laughs> between between that and too short, you know, Nancy Reagan came to my house and gave me a oh, uh, 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 yeah, you already know. Right. You already know. You already know what it is. Life is too short. You know, like that was that was that was it, man. 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 Hey. <laughs> Hey, you out there with him, man? I've been begging that man on Instagram. Like, he likes all my pictures on Instagram. I'm like, bro, let, let us get an interview. Nothing. Oh, we out here, short dog. Hit us up. Oh, Snoop? Oh, Snoop, yeah. I mean, I mean, uh, uh, too short, really? Oh, yeah. 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 Hey, I've been to one of his concerts before. It was it was real close. I'm not, not, I never had a conversation with him, but he seems pretty, like, laid back. You know, he seems pretty laid back, kind of. You know, he he don't seem like an aggressive guy. He seems like he's easy to talk to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I could see that. I went to a Snoop concert once, man. Like that cat, that was a hell of a concert, bro. Mhm. Man, and you wouldn't think so, cause like his style is not like a super hype style, but his catalog is just so phenomenal, man. It's like a that was an experience. Mm. Um, I'm trying to think. Oh, uh, what's but that's probably more about the fight, no? But back in the day, I saw Houdini, Run DMC, I never LL that. Cool J, and I'm trying to think who else, I can't even remember who else was with. But that might have been like that's the apex of my concert career right there. Mm-hmm. Oh, really? Yeah, like they. I've like, seen LL. I've seen on. the old LL, not the young one though. I've never seen the young oh. one. I would have loved to see the young one sing Rock the Bells. Like, I would have loved to hear, like, you know, I'm bad. A young LL perform, I'm bad. I can watch it on YouTube now, but damn, I'm bad. Man. Him jumping out of the radio or something. First, oh. first, first was coming out, I was just about to say that. When he first was coming out the radio, I was there. Live yeah, and, oh, you were. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. I got I got in the house, LL. Yeah. You got in the house. Well, I got, well, I got the SWAT LL. What is it, SWAT? What is he on now? Yeah, SWAT. What, 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 what is that he on? NSI, NCI, NCIS? I, I got that LL. Hey, I got that LL that, that beats up burglars and shit like that. You know what I mean? Right. Right. I got heads from LL. You know what I mean? <laughs> Hot toddy, whatever that was. Hot toddy, what was that? Man, man, I don't, shit, don't don't ask me, man. But that that yeah, that one. Oh, and MC Hammer, shout out to Hammer. Like I was not a fan of that guy's music per se, but I saw mm-hmm. that guy live, and man, oh, really? after that, yeah, like Hammer puts puts down. It's like a million people on stage. It's like the most orchestrated. I mean, it's, it's, it, you would think that it, it sounds crazy, but it's like everything is choreographed down to the most minute thing. Mhm. And the dude's energy was just like, you know, and I'm talking about way back in the day, like his mm-hmm. energy was just like, uh, like 
not seen anybody put on give that much effort in a concert except Beyonce. Mm-hmm. And she gets the edge. I never seen her live. I saw her live special on HBO, but she gets the edge because mm-hmm. she do that shit in heels. Like, how the fuck you doing yeah. all of that dancing? Yeah. All of that running That's around real. in in stilettos. Yeah, you, yeah. You get the edge right there. Nah, bro. Hammer had a cartoon, and the shoes could talk. That shit was like that, bro. I remember that <laughs> I was a kid. Uh, he I had an ass no Hammer had everything. Hammer, Hammer had I didn't have all that money, though. Damn. Right. You Not know all those no. people that you said was on stage was also on payroll. Yeah. Yeah, right. they were. Because you know? how do you, you go broke if you got... If you got four knocks, how does them knock for broke? I don't think it was huh? the people, you know, the people on stage were actually, you know, earning their keep. I think it was the people that weren't on stage that he was paying to do silly shit that end up, you know, him going broke. I don't think the uh, the horse stable, I don't think that worked out. You know, he, he made a lot of investments that didn't necessarily work out, too. It seemed like but, no matter how many, it seemed like he could sustain himself, though, you know? Well, he's still making money. He got a cat. Hopefully he owns his catalog, you know? He's still making money. Yeah, Hammer's doing money. good. Actually, uh, they, they, he, he fucks with a, a media, I don't even know, social media, like, advertising group. Anyway, like, 360 Wise. That's my man's name. Shout out to Robert. Um, uh-huh. But, yeah, they, yeah, you know, Hammer's still doing his thing, and he bounced back. Like, that's a dope story. He has a really good story, too, if somebody was going to yeah. do a movie. because. He didn't, you know, he didn't publicly had the peaks and valleys, which most people valleys they keep to themselves, you know. But he was at his lowest point in front of everybody. Mm, he ain't crumbled. You're right. You're right. He went to church too, right? He became a preacher or something, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I believe so. Yeah. Emma had a full evolution as a rapper. I mean, he was, you know, he legit to quit. And he was. Pumps in the bump, you know what I mean? In the yeah, that was bad right there. <laughs> Pumps in the bump. Really yeah. The video was dope, though. <laughs> hey, remember that? Hey, Dion, Dion Sanders on the phone. <laughs> the big ass phone. <laughs> His rap career was pretty bad, too. Dion, Kobe, yeah. all of them did. Yeah, Shaq was all right, though. Yeah, no, no Shaq's Shaq album was good. I love that song with him and Jay-Z. I like that song with him and Jay Z. Shaq got a song with Biggie that's fire. You can't stop the rain. It's fire. Yeah, you can't yeah. stop the rain. See, that fire. album, you can't stop the rain. That's it. There you go. Yep. Yeah, with the white fire cover, fire. white kind of gray cover. Yeah. 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 You, yeah. you know the sad part about it though? Shaq had a better album than Cannabis. What? Wow. Uh, I never thought about well, it. Well, Why well, did Cannabis wrong on that though? On that production. Wyclef is not a good producer, but, you know. I'm not, thank you. Wyclef done lost his way, though. Like, Wyclef is not the same guy, you know, 20 years ago. He's not that dude. You know, he's not, you know. He, he's kind of like an organic guy. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. he, he would have to get someone that plays, like, live instruments, like a John Mayer or, you know what I mean? He can't, he ain't for no hip-hop head. And I know, yeah, he, he he's just not good. He's not good. I mean, and, and you hit it on the head, though. He's not a good hip-hop producer. Yeah. He's not. No, but if you need some, 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 you know, some spiritual-sounding music or you need some, mm-hmm. something with a, 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 I don't know, Jamaican swing to it, like you might call White uh-huh. Clef. But if you need some hip-hop shit yeah. and you call White Clef, you're about to fail. Uh-huh. Yeah, and it's going to cost you a lot of money to fail. Up. Huh. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he did. Like yeah. cannabis, like cannabis was probably the the toughest rapper. I ain't gonna say the toughest because there was so many tough rappers right then and there at that point in time. But yo, you understand how gifted he is rapping wise? He just oh, we know. I'm from New York, so I, I I know all about cannabis. Like you know, what I mean, I was repping everything in New York. Him, Keith Murray. I mean, the list goes on. We're not gonna say and list names, but oh man, cannabis was that dude. Yeah, cannabis, yeah, was, that cannabis dude. was that dude. Yeah. yeah. But you can't blame that all on White Clef, though, man. Like, some artists, especially the really, really, really super dope lyrical artists, oftentimes have difficulty picking beats because they yeah, know they're they so too. dope writing shit that they, they don't put as much emphasis on how the track fits with what they're saying. 
Yeah, you know who else is like that? The guy who did this. The guy. Did he do a song with R. Kelly? I'm drawing a blank on his name, but he was a he was a big time lyricist. It'll come to me. It'll come to me as we go. You said uh, R. Kelly. He did a remix of R. Kelly. Uh, I mean, it's on the tip of my tongue. It's on, I know. It'll come uh, to me. Uh, what's the guy out there uh, from Cali? Actually, went to jail. Um, really dope, dope, dope lyricist. Damn, same thing. I'm just bro- drawing a blank. And this is my guy, too, lyrically. Huh? Stay from Cali. Can yeah, I go to your Cali. hotel? I want to get Cassidy. my room key. No, Cassidy. Oh? Cassidy. Cassidy, yeah. Uh-huh. Cassidy's another dude that, that couldn't find his way on a beat. Couldn't make, couldn't have that radio appeal. But if you if you put him on 106 in Park, you put him on Freestyle Friday, you put, man, oh, yeah. you like, why ain't this guy got a record deal? Yeah. Like Blind Fury. I mean, he's not black, but Blind Fury was like that, too. They tried to put him on an album. He signed with Rough Rider. Couldn't do it. But but he, but he, you give him a mic, you got him freestyle. He's amazing. You know? So, and you know, you get a lot of... Blind you get Fury a lot was of dope on BET. Yeah, BET. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. He was dope, but he wasn't dope when you put a... You tell him to get in the studio and make a song. Like, uh, eh, Okay. Nah, he go like, back when you put him in front of some real like you do, you. do you uh are you into battle rap like like URL? Not heavy, but but I follow it passively now. When I was younger, I passed yeah. it. Uh, yeah, he wouldn't make it. He like make, Theory he Jones, Murder right? Mook, all them guys. Yeah, I, I follow them guys. Yeah. Yeah, your boy okay. just got from what I hear, he just like, took an L too, Murder Mook. It was oh you know, yeah I'll yeah on pay per view last week, right? Yeah. Yep. I'll say, yeah. I'll tell you this now. I, I watched it. I saw the battle. And Mook, Mook was dope. They both were dope. Bird was just better. Like, Mook was trying out some new things that he ain't tried before, and it ain't go uh-huh. over too well, and Bird was prepared for him. But it's a, uh-huh. really, it's a really dope battle. I, mean, it, I think it should be coming out in the next few days. It should be coming out on YouTube. Actually. Okay. I'm going to definitely check that out. And damn, I'm just dope, looking at... It. My bad, but I'm just looking at the time. We only got about 10 minutes left. God damn, I didn't even realize that. Um, and and, and before we even get to that point, man, I definitely want to say we truly appreciate your time and your wisdom. All the King. time, definitely All the time, a phenomenal King. build. Uh huh. Thank you. I appreciate you. I'm I'm following. I just followed you guys. Where it's it's my skin, right? My skin is my skin, right? My skin is my sin. My sin. I, I apologize. And it got like oh, the, uh, the rubber bands on it, right? The rubber bands, right? Yep, that would be it. That's dope. Gotcha. So, so when you upload it, I'm going to pull it and, and add it to my – and put it on my channel. All right. Um, and actually, um, the whole show, it, it'll be ready, I don't know, probably about 10 minutes after we're done. Because we live okay. streamed it on, on, on our um, – we got two YouTube channels. Uh, the okay. My Skin Is My Sin one, we can't go live on it because I, I had some slight copyright problems on there. Oh, we really? Got one, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we got another one called the Intellectually Petty. It's only got 10 followers, so – uh, subscribe to us if you're out there. Intellectual pattern. Uh, yeah, we like to just, you know, make sure that we still keep it live, though. So I had to start uh-huh. this one up, and I ain't really got a chance to really do anything with it. Not that we got, like, a million followers on the other one. Like, you're doing numbers. We're over here, like, No, but, but, but hopefully hopefully people are, people will come. So make sure you tag it. So make sure you tag the uh, – tag it, and I'll just upload it and just re-upload it, you know? That's very well, dope. That's very dope. I definitely oh, appreciate yeah. that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, thank you for is having there, me. Is there anything that you want to uh, leave with the people before you go? Man, I say this in my head a hundred times a day. Keep on betting on yourself. You know, fear can only re- reside when you have indecision. You understand? So, so, if if you are in a position where you're 100% working towards where you want to go, fear can't reside. You understand what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, if you just bet on yourself, believe in yourself, and I know you've heard it before, but, but because we are all grown men, we fully can understand the concept of betting on ourselves, where we're not going to spend $1,000 on some shoes. We're going to put $1,000 in our purpose. We're not going to spend three hours playing video games. We're going to put that three hours – on uh, on on Google trying to figure out a way. You understand what I'm saying? We're not going to, like, 
do like social things that's gonna in addition take away from our time but take away from our from our spiritual capital. You know, like 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 our our spiritual realm is also has currency attached to it. You know, our metaphysical realm has currency attached to it. Like like money. Like it's like money. Like you're paying every day. Are you getting a return on it? Are you are you spiritually jousting with someone where you're going to get a, a spiritual return. And, 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 and I tell people, I don't know if you heard the video I did about how uh, the 4-4 album, like, blew me wide open in terms mm-hmm. of you can, you can still be that guy you want to be and still be the guy you're supposed to be. You understand? Like, 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 like people want to separate, like, okay, as long as I pay the bills, I'm about to go – I'm about to go to my side view house. As long as I pay the bills, I can stay out all night and play cards. As long as I pay the bills, I can go to the strip club and, and do all that. But don't you know, if you do what you're supposed to do, the guy that you want to become, they come to you. Mm. Everything comes to you. Everything manifests itself. Like, like it's like, like we're moonlighting as, as, as we're, we're spiritual beings moonlighting as human beings. You understand? You ever walk by somebody and you see like a, not a halo, but you see like infrared around them or, or like, or maybe I'm using the wrong color or the wrong adjective to describe it, but you, you just like, aura. like, aura. like an aura. Yeah. Maximize that sh- man. Stop that person. Stop what you're doing and identify it. I tell people that all the time, man. Like it was just something about you. Like you had this aura, or je ne sais quoi, or you know, like I, 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 I felt your spiritual completeness. Like build on that. That's that's where we want to be, really. In real life, that's where we want to be. We want to be floating in the spiritual realm. You know, what I mean, let everyone else be mediocre and, and patronize each other. And, in the uh in the physical realm, but in the spiritual realm is really really where we want to be, and like this past year in eight fourteen months total. Ever since I heard that four four album, I was like, you know what, it's time to go. I've been way more tactile in my community. I've I've uh, I've spent my resources. You know what I mean? Like in terms of my time, in terms of my money, you, bringing my family with me, bringing my kids with me. You understand what I'm saying? And uh, it's uh. It makes life so more worthwhile. Mm. Like it, it's 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 and, and and the experience is only one of one. So it's not like I can describe to you what it's like, what the actual details of it is, because your spiritual completeness is one of one. It's not one of eight billion people. Right. It's one of one. It's not like you understand what I'm saying. And when you get there, you don't want to let it go. And, and and you're going to have days and moments where you battle with it. But at the end, when, when you sit, when you sit at home and you're now it's your computer screen, you like, man, I did it. I made it through the day. You know what I mean? I made it through the week. I made it through the months. I'm growing, you know, because if it's not growing, it's dead, you know, like, like, uh, I always tell people, I always tell people, like, people say, well, you're aggressive, you're abrasive. I said, the Bible says you're either for me or against me. I'm going to mm. say that God said you're either for me or against me. So you know what that means? Like, in my hood, they say either, either effing with me or you're not. That's it. It ain't no, it ain't no, well, we could be, no, God is very plain and very plain and clear and concise. You either for me or against me, and I and and I and I say that with my goals. You either for me or against me. It ain't no in between. Fact. If I gotta go to China, if I gotta go to China and, and look for that four leaf clover, I'm going to China, I'm going to find that four leaf clover. You know that that's that that that's the realness, you know. That's and, a real uh, shit, man. Mm-hmm. But, so. That's where I'm at, man. I'm floating, like for real. Like I'm spiritually floating. I I, I have some dog days, though. I'm not gonna sit here and tell you I'm 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 like Zen master. Oh hell no, man. I go through that <laughs> shit. You know what I mean? But, but but like I said, when I come home, because my because my my home is so spiritually nourishing, I can fill the gas tank up. You understand where I'm coming from? 
Right. Mm-hmm. Right. It, it, you know, and sometimes it takes two days to fill it up. Sometimes Dre and I ain't talking. Sometimes we're like, you know what I mean? Sometimes I'm working too much. You know, sometimes I have consecutive travel days. You know what I mean? Come travel weekends, you know? So it, it happens, you know? Sometimes Lincoln wants to be a, wants to be a toddler, you know? So one time Kennedy wants to cry all night, you know? She don't want to fall. So these are all human experiences. But at the end of the day, we're, we're spiritual beings moonlighting, experiencing these human experiences, you know? And that's the... That's where I'm at, you know. I want to, I, I, you know, like, people are afraid to be the example. And these are the conversations I have with Malcolm X a lot of times. Like, Mom, I really want to be that example. Like, I really, really want to be that example. And, I, and I, I'm not trying to be on the same standard as Malcolm X. I'm not putting myself as his parallel or anything like that. My pillar may only be my street. Malcolm X was worldwide. You understand? But but I'd be having this conversation with Malcolm, like, Malcolm, I really want to do this. Like, people talk to God. I talk to Malcolm ten times more than I talk to God. Like, like because I have a living example of him. You know, like, he's black. He grew up in a tough time. You know, he changed. He was Malcolm Little before he came Malcolm X. You understand what I'm saying? He was faithful to Betty Shabazz. You know, he was faithful to Betty. You know, like, if he wasn't faithful, we would have known about it. You know? And, uh, uh, he was just a special guy. He was a guy every day of his life. He knew, the, he knew the hourglass was upside down. Right. You understand? He knew his time was coming. How do you go through life knowing your time is near? Like, right. think about right. that from like from a mindset. Someone's about to kill me. I know I'm gonna die. Whether it's the government or whether it's the nation of Islam, whether it's a a, a, a person who hates me because I'm not with the nation of Islam anymore. You understand what I'm saying? I'm not saying the nation mm-hmm. of Islam, but, but you got, now he has a, he has a saying. bigger realm of haters to pull from. Every time I shake this black man, black man's hand, is he going to shake me with his left hand? When I, when I shake his hand with his right, you understand? The next time I get in the back of this police car, they're going to take me to the Hudson river and throw me over. Like, you know, like, I have the ultimate respect for Malcolm X, man. He is, like, my hero, man. Like, like my, oh, he is my, he's my dude, man. Like, May 19th is a special day in my house, man. Special day. Man, that's, so. On that note, bro, we got to wrap it up. We got, like, one minute. Appreciate left, y'all, King. Definitely, Appreciate man. you, bro. Thanks Need for coming anything, on, man. man, please don't hesitate to reach out, bro. All the time. And you should use my platform too. That's hey, pretty dope. Absolutely. Man. Yeah, absolutely. you know what I mean. So, very dope. Uh huh. So we'll link so, up. Hey, Rome, and give him my number, Rome. That's a fact. No, no doubt. Put us in a group text one time. I mean, not a group text or a group text or a group DM, and, and we'll be good. All right. That, All right cool. Yeah, that, that that's a bet right there. Yeah. Um, and if you are, if you do tune into this this show today, tomorrow, or in a hundred years, make sure you share the show. Um, okay. Don't forget to check out the website, myskinismysin.com. Um, and please go subscribe to Barbershop Conversations on YouTube. Subscribe to Intellectually Petty and My Skin Is My Sin on YouTube. Uh, check out uh, uh, the Queen Offie's uh, website, KMLPortraits.com. Definitely one of the finest artists of our time. If you need something, hit her up. Uh, check out Designs by Monet, Black Spot, that's B-L-A-Q, spot.com, Liberation Minded Media.